Tonight, the Rays road trip continues. Stop two at a three-city road trip. We greet you from the Bay Area and Oakland, California, McAfee Coliseum, as FSN Florida proudly presents Tampa Bay Rays baseball tonight versus the Oakland A's. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to an evening of Rays baseball. Dwayne Stats with Brian Anderson sitting in for Joe McGrain. And, Brian, we're happy to have you with us and look forward to the next week and a half working together. Dwayne, it's going to be awesome. It it's going to be, be awesome. Yes, it will. <laughs> That's Yes, it will. And Todd Callis, as usual, will join us throughout the evening as well. Well, the big story regarding the Rays, as everyone by now knows, the injury situation, the Rays suffering two crucial injuries. Carl Crawford will have surgery on that hand tomorrow, potentially out for the year. They are hopeful that Carl will be back for the final day or two of the regular season. Evan Longoria placed on the disabled list with the broken wrist, and they are hopeful that he will be back by the 1st of September. Ten-game winner for Oakland, Justin Dukeshire will be on the hill. And the Rays will counter with their right-hander, Andy Sonnenstein, looking for victory number 12. Back with all the action in a moment. Second game of the series between the Rays and the Athletics. Oakland winning the first game last night, 2-1. to one. So the Rays, as they start play tonight, 3-2 and two on this 10-game road trip. Let's take a quick look at the starting lineup. Gabe Gross in there for the Rays. Starting lineup brought to you by Southeast Toyota. Gross will hit eighth. So far in August, a couple of home runs at an average of 320. Hockey atop the lineup, followed by B.J. Upton and Carlos Pena. And Cliff Floyd goes into the cleanup spot as the D.H. High bar at third. Hinsky in left with Deanna Navarro doing the catching ahead of Gross and then Zobras hitting ninth. Justin Dukeshire on the mound tonight, making his 21st start. Obviously, 10 and 7 record, 2.51. Very good at home. He's uh, uh, given up a batting average of 165 at home. Is uh, 7 and 2 at home, and uh, is a guy who's going to feature a, a two-seamer, a four-seamer. Throws a lot of strikes, uh, works a cutter, and has a very good curveball. A guy that's not afraid to go out and attack hitters. Uh, trust his ability to throw strikes. And uh, you know, so he should be around the plate. Guys should be able to swing early in the, in the count. And we'll take a look at the defensive setup behind him. His battery mate tonight, Kurt Suzuki, who has turned out to be more or less the everyday catcher here for the Oakland club. That starting defensive set brought to you by the good folks at Rico. There's Suzuki. He's really made progress with his throwing earlier in the year. Had a lot of difficulty throwing out base runners. He's been better recently and is swinging the bat very well since the All-Star break. Andy Sonnenstein in the Rays dugout. Set to go to work tonight. Rays start the night in first place in the American League's Eastern Division. Their lead at the moment stands at two and a half. The Red Sox have won at home over the Texas Rangers. That was an 8-4 final. And here's Aki. Akinori Iwamura stepping in to lead it off for the Rays. He drove in the lone run of the game last night with a sacrifice fly. And the first pitch is a strike around the knees. We should see a lot of strikes thrown tonight from the combination of Dukeshire and Sonnenstein. And quick work. Looks like uh, Justin likes to get up on the mound, get the sign, and, and go right after these guys. Not a lot of wasted time and effort out there. 1-1 one, one the count. Popped up. That's going to carry out a play. Take the count to one and two. Well, there is an advantage, Brian, into working quickly for the pitcher and the defenders behind them. Oh, the, the players behind you will love you. They, the guys in the field, they, they want to see action. They want you out there working quickly. That keeps them on the balls of their feet ready to make a play. Pitch breaking down and in. You know, they'll tell you, they, you know, some of the guys that are notoriously slow, Miguel Batista comes to mind from Seattle, who takes a long time in between pitches. Rafael Betancourt, you know, the, you talk to the fielders, and, 
you know, they get lazy out there and, and just not quite as uh, quick off the ball. A little tap off the end of the bat. Tough play. Pennington with the pickup and the throw in time to get up. So that's the first out. Pennington to Hanahan. Pennington made his major league debut last night. Youngster went 0 for 3, playing third base. Here's B.J. Upton. There's a strike call to Upton. This is the first time the Rays have seen Dukeshire as a starting pitcher. They saw a lot of him out of the Oakland bullpen over the last few years. And he did not give them much. He's 2 0 a lifetime. And his earned run average against the Rays is 0 0.75. A little chop near the bag at second. Hey. And Crosby threw to first, got him. That was close. Nice play by Crosby coming across the infield like that on a short hop, making the scoop, throwing on the run, something that he's very adept at. Number 23, Carlos Pena. Makes it look easy. Gets him by half a step. Nice play right there. So a couple of ground balls. Two up, two down. And it's Carlos Pena. He goes after the first pitch and lofts a high pop foul. Carries out of play. Rays have won 10 of their last 13. A little three game winning streak coming out of Seattle. And that was snapped last night in the two to one Oakland decision. Against a team who has been struggling mightily since coming. the All Star break, you're right. Yeah, that coming with 21 out of 24 coming into last night. It kind of reminds you of that series in Cleveland where Cleveland had just come off a road trip uh, where they had lost 10 in a row and were able to, uh, to sweep. To sweep Tampa Bay. Two and one. There's Bob Guerin, the skipper of the A's. Yeah, his offense has been a problem, and his pitching at times has been spotty. High shot deep into right center field. Boy, did he hit that one way out of here into right center field. Carlos Pena connects for the 22nd time this year, and the Rays have a one nothing lead. What a shot by Pena. That was a blast. That was a that was a backdoor cutter that came too much over the middle of the plate and right into the swing of Carlos Pena. You can see right here. Boom. Perfect leverage. Stiff front leg. Stayed behind that ball. Great. Got the head to it and hit it a ton. When you talk about stepping up Pena could be one of those guys who if he gets as hot as he was for most of the year last year he's capable of carrying a lineup. Oh sure and it's been something that you've been kind of waiting for all year you know you see little little uh, you know spurts here and there where he'll get hot and have a couple of good games and then kind of come down a little bit and you know he's perfectly capable of uh, of getting hot for an extended period and boy oh boy if he could do that at this time that would really lessen the loss of uh, of Carl and Evan. Well the Rays continue to look for more of their offense. Joe Madden, Steve Henderson both think there's more offense to be had out of this lineup. And sooner or later, they're looking for that to emerge. This would be a great time for it. Well, the good thing about this team, too, is it's very creative on offense. You're going to steal bags, hit and run. Um, and you maybe start bunting even a little bit more. Cliff out in front, he had a big cut. And the count goes to 2 2. This is the third time this year that Joe Madden has used Cliff Floyd in the cleanup spot. A pitch inside. Brian, we might see him more hitting for it. I, I think that we will. I, I think Joe wants to put him in there, the guy that's, you know, been through the, the battles of uh, uh, playoff. You know, tight baseball and pennant races and you know he's got a lot of experience as he takes ball four right there good eye and, and put some you know instill some confidence in him 
you know, get him right into that middle of that lineup. Um, you, you know, you know he's perfectly capable of, of hitting right-handed pitching and left-handed pitching for that matter. It's just going to be a matter of, uh, you know, is he going to be able to, to hold up over, over the long haul? But certainly you put an experienced guy in the middle of that lineup and, and hope to ride him a little bit. And in that regard, the Rays certainly realize that he has to be the DH, so they're not going to ask him to play defense. And if those knees can hold up out of the DH role, he would be a dangerous power bat right there in the middle of the lineup. Dukes here had Ibar out in front reaching for that pitch. One one the count. First inning home run the Rays have taken the lead. Two and one. Got a very good curveball. You could see that one there. A lot of depth on it. Likes to use it as a as a put up put away pitch. He's not a big strikeout guy, but he will attack the strike zone. Over to first, and Cliff is back in. Floyd, by the way, not that he's in the mind to run right now, but he does have a stolen base this year. There's ball three to Ibar, three and one. Dukes here, 30 years old. Twice has been named to the American League All Star team. Throws a 3 1 strike. We got the first two men on ground balls. Then the long home run by Pena. There goes Floyd on the 3 2, and it's popped up left side. Pennington in from third, makes the catch, and that's going to retire the side. Rays put up a run in the first on the long home run by Carlos Pena. Bottom of the first coming, Rays one, and Oakland coming into bat. Rays with a one nothing lead. We're headed into the bottom of the first inning. Bob Guerin's lineup presented by Southeast Toyota. Ellis Gonzalez, Thomas, and Cust. Bobby Crosby, who hit the two-run home run that made the difference last night, has three in his last eight games. In there again at shortstop, Hanahan, Suzuki, Patterson, and Pennington rounding out the lineup against Andy Sonnenstein. First pitch from Andy is in there a strike call to Mark Ellis. Andy Sonnenstein making his 24 start of the year, 11 and 6 record, four and a half ERA, set a career high in innings pitched already. And he's quickly ahead of Ellis who fouls this pitch away. So a two strike count on Mark Ellis. Inside of all in two strikes. Ellis like a lot of this Oakland lineup has seen his average drop. He's hitting 231 but a better hitter than that. Chopper up the middle and that one's going to skip through. Didn't hit it hard. Just got it by the mound and right over the bag at second. And the A's have a base runner. Ray's defensive setup brought to you by Rico. Harry Kinski in the absence of Carl Crawford he'll be getting more playing time making his ninth start in left field as you can see he started on both corners in the outfield and on the infield. Ellis at first and here's Carlos Gonzalez. Pitch is down a ball to no strikes. Oakland over its last 14 games has scored a total of 30 runs. They scored two last night and that was enough to hand the Rays a two to one loss. Puts a lot of pressure on your pitching staff and you're not able to score runs. 
Ground ball to first. Pena goes to second. Out there and the throw back to Pena. That's the 3-6-3 double play. Pena, Zobrist, and right back to Carlos to erase Ellis on the double play. Nice smooth turn on the double play. I actually thought Carlos was going to step on the bag there and then get the tag, but still had enough time to make the throw down to Zobrist and get the return to retire Gonzalez. Well, sometimes when you see him that close to the bag, when you feel the ball, you're like, get me an out. Get me an out. <laughs> But those good infielders have that great clock in their head. That's right. A and sense he, of timing. And he's a good one. Here's Frank Thomas fouling one out of play. Strike one. Well, that's been such a big part of the Rays' success. Their defense, particularly their inner defense. That infield all year has been very good. And tonight, again, Bartlett's not out there. Longoria gone. One ball, one strike. Well, it's been well documented with the pitching staff and the talent that's out there. And then when you combine that with having a defense that catches the ball and doesn't beat itself, it, you know, it leaves you deep into games. You know, you're still in the game. I mean, it gives you a, a good chance to win where if you can find any semblance of offense, you're going to be able to pull out games late and you're going to be able to, to be a consistent winner, which is what they've done all year long. A little tap foul. Well, it's interesting, Brian, how it develops. You're not going to ask Ibar to be the defensive third baseman that Longoria has been, nor will you ask Zobris to be the defensive shortstop that Bartlett has been. But the more they play, and this is not to say they're not good, they've done a good job out there. You ask them to make the routine play right. and occasionally the exceptional play. This one's going to be foul. And the more they play and do that, when that confidence level grows, they become interestingly enough even better defensive players well that it's all about getting the reps I mean if you're out there you know spotting you know spot duty and you're not getting a lot of playing time out there put a lot of pressure on yourself you're not used to being out there things don't come as smoothly Frank Thomas lifts a high foul right side gross over there near the bullpen with a full head of steam and that ball's just out of his reach right in front of the bullpen Great attempt there by Gabe. So much foul, foul territory here at the Coliseum. Look at him going. You know they're giving him help over there. He just uh, just was not fast enough. Obviously not a distance runner. And you're right. Uh, a lot of foul territory here. And pitchers normally love that. Oh, yeah. Gives you a lot more opportunities for those foul balls that just get into the stands and other parks. Your third baseman and your catcher make the catch here. Frank Thomas hits a high fly ball to left. Hinsky back, not yet to the track, and he'll make the catch to retire the side. No runs, one hit, double play. Hinsky's going to lead off the second. Rays lead one nothing. More Rays gear on the road as we play in Game Two of this three-game series in Oakland. Don't forget the summer concert series presented by Hess August 30th. When we the Kings perform a post game concert as part of the Rays Saturday nights presented by catch 47 on Bright House Networks. So get your tickets now. Got to say the post game concert series has been a smashing success this year. It has been varied and entertaining. Lots of fun. Great turnouts. Harry Kinski hits a 1 0 pitch deep the other way. Patterson back and that one will get out of here. Home run up over the scoreboard out there in left center field, and Hinsky gives the Rays a two to nothing lead with his 17th home run of the year. So the Rays go deep twice here in the early part of this game against Dukeshire. You can see right here, Hinsky gets a fastball up and out over the plate. Very strong man. A lot of lift to left center field. He got another another nice leverage swing on a ball up in the zone. He let it get deep, stayed on it, stayed underneath it, and drove that ball out to left center field. Not an easy way place to get a ball out here. Plays very long. Well, here's Deonor Navarro. He takes a strike around the knees. So Hensky. Now with 50 runs batted in an opposite field home run. Two strikes the count to Navarro. 
This is only the third time this year that Dukeshire has given up as many as two home runs in a start. It's a number off the end of the bat third base side foul. The first time came back in May against the Angels on the road. They got him for two home runs and scored six runs in five innings off him. And he still won that game 15 to 8. The other time he gave up two home runs was against the Texas Rangers here. They scored eight runs off him that night in six innings and he lost that game nine to four. You know, and you wouldn't think that too because Dukeshire is not a stuff guy. I mean, he's a smart pitcher. He's a very heady pitcher. He knows what he's doing out there. Uh, but he's not like a real big sinker guy and doesn't have overpowering stuff. And to be able to keep the ball in the yard uh, with the consistency that he has all year is, is impressive. Now, this place doesn't, you know, doesn't hurt you pitching here. But uh, he's been able to do it on the road also. He's been very impressive. You see his numbers there, second only to Cliff Lee and earned run average. Strikes out Navarro looking. But how about this uh, for the Rays? He had given them only two runs in 24 innings lifetime against them, covering 18 relief appearances. And they have two runs on two solo home runs in the first couple innings tonight. Here's Gabe Gross. He takes a strike. It's shortened up on the bat. Gross hitting a little over 230 right now. One and one. The opposition hitting only 206 against Dukeshire, and that's the best. In the major leagues, not only the American League, but either league. One and two. Gross hitting eighth. Ben Zobris will be next. Ground ball headed towards short, picked up by Crosby. He makes the play with a toss to Hanahan. That was a really nice sequence of pitching there by Dukeshire. A couple of slow curve balls to slow the bat down, then runs a fastball up and out of the way, and all Gabe could do was uh, stick the bat out and hit a weak ground ball to short. Here's Zobrist. Ben. Hitting 232. That slow breaking ball is in there for a strike. Ben is starting to play like he looks like he's had enough of Durham. <laughs> he's certainly swinging the bat like that. He has gotten stronger this year. Well, even defensively. You know, early on uh, when he started getting some regular playing time, the first time that Jason Bartlett went down. Looked like he had the yips out there a little bit. And uh, has, that's come around very nicely here on the second go round with, with Jason being out. And I think that's uh, due to growing confidence sure. as much as anything. He's he's had uh, an opportunity to be in some crucial situations for the Rays on both sides of the ball. Lifts it toward the line and left. That's Patterson. The Rays are finished in the second. But they pick up another run on the Hinsky home run. We go to the bottom of the second, and the Rays lead 2 0. We're back in Oakland where the Rays lead 2 0. A couple of solo home runs. The FSN Florida interactive poll available again. Log on to FSNFlorida.com and click on the Rays link to submit your entry. Should the Rays call up David Price before September? Yes or no? Vote on FSNFlorida.com. There's Jack Cust. Cust leading off, and he hits a fly ball to left. Hinsky is there for this one. As you know, Price got off to a, a great start this year. 
and has just been promoted to Triple A Durham. He made his Triple A debut tonight and gave up three earned runs, seven hits, and four innings. 80 pitches. He struck out six, didn't walk anybody. He's human. That after 11 and 0 combined between A and Double A. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see the the circumstances that surround that decision, and in what role he'll be, if and when he does get called. Yeah, and, and it's not a cut and dried decision. I mean, the no, he, he obviously is is a great talent. He had a great collegiate career, and that's why he was selected where he was in the draft, and he was impressive this spring. I, he impressed me just in watching basic drills like pickoff drills at second base. I thought he had great footwork and when I watched him a couple times in that group he was the best in his group at doing that. So you start to understand where that success comes from. It's more than just his physical gift. Chopped to short. Zobris plays the hop and Crosby's out number two at second base and having said all that that great start it would be uh, in some ways easy to make a call to get him up here but there, there's so much that goes into that on both sides on his right. side his developmental side as well as what it does to the pitching staff you have here and as you alluded to Brian how do you use him when you get him here in the bullpen or do you put him in the rotation I think that's the, the topic that everybody's you know front office Andrew and, and Joe and Jerry and everybody getting you know together and, and trying to figure that out because uh, you know to take a guy who, who's been a starting pitcher you know through college and and all of this year and, and put him out in the bullpen broken bat ground ball the first Hanahan is out Pena unassisted more on price as this <laughs> evening continues we're at the end of two and it's a two nothing game raise. Welcome back tonight to Oakland. Rays lead two to nothing. We go to the third. Summer cash with gas for life from the Florida Lotteries here. You may have won two hundred fifty thousand dollars gas for a year or even gas for life today. Summer cash. Get out and play. Check winning numbers at FLALottery.com. It will be the top of the order. Eva Moore is showing bunt. Takes the bat back and takes the pitch for a ball. Aki followed by B.J. Upton and then Carlos Pena. Justin Dukeshire on the mound and that pitch is a strike. Boy, this has been a difficult place for the Rays to play throughout the years. They're just 12 and 37 here all time. Do you ever hear of a team coming out here and playing well <laughs> I mean this seems to be <laughs> I know from you know all, all the time and trips in here with the Angels and, and, and the Royals and uh, you know the Indians that this has always been a difficult place to play just uh, it's a different kind of atmosphere there's usually a pretty good team on the other side of the field that can pitch well and they have uh, you know they play very well in this building and despite this uh, latest little slide the A's have been in they are over 500 here this year at home. They're 33 and 29 here. Hockey lines a base hit, skips it through the infield. The Rays have their third hit. <laughs> Two runs, three hits. B.J. Upton will bat. B.J. out on a close play at first. His first time up. On a ground ball handled by the shortstop Crosby. 1-0 now. Raised this year in the season series with Oakland 4-3. And they're even here two wins and two losses after last night's two to one decision. Two balls no strikes. Interesting to see here if there's any 
Joe has any action on the base pads. You got a guy that throws strikes is going to be around the plate. BJ's got a nice approach to right field. Aki on first base. And there's ball three. Three and oh. Dukes here's given up two home runs. He's walked a man. Two runs, three hits. BJ takes strike one. Three one now. Hockey's on the move. The pitch is a strike and the throw. One hops in and he is out of there. Ellis, the second baseman, takes the throw. Hockey caught stealing for the fifth time this year. And the Rays lose the base runner. Well, here's Aki leading off. Gets his jump and goes. Looking back in. Got a pitch up in the strike zone to handle. And right there, I mean, just slid right on top of, right on top of the glove. The glove got down between the bag and the foot. Easy call. And Upton strikes out. So a caught stealing and a strikeout, and suddenly two outs with the bases empty. Now Carlos Pena up there. All tell wireless. There's a circle for everyone. Call five, ten, or twenty free numbers on any network. With my circle exclusively from Altel. Carlo circling the bases in the first with his 22nd home run of the year. Off speed pitch in there for a strike. Now what of a turn of events in this inning. You had Aki on first base in the 3 0 count. Get thrown out at second trying to steal and he's able to come back and get BJ and now Carlos is up with nobody. On. And that pitch just got him. He's hit by a pitch. Well you knew at some point that the Rays baggy uniforms but these guys the way they like to wear them was going to come into play. And I mean baggy. That's size 56. <laughs> Break for the Rays. So Carlos goes to first. And here's Big Cliff Floyd. Floyd walked his first time. He takes that pitch for a strike. It never surprises you. At any given moment, you expect him to hit a screaming line drive that just will not stop. He's the only guy that I've seen that has consistently hit balls line drives up the middle through the you know, right over the pitcher's mound that have backspin on. <laughs> I mean you just don't see that usually a line drive back through the middle you know it, it's it's got a knuckle action to it it's just the, the balls hit solid and it has that knuckling action he is able to do it with backspin and you know if you go out for batting practice and stand out in right center he'll wear out that right center wall all day long puts tremendous amount of He's got a you know a, a big swing and a very level swing and is able to catch that ball just right and gets a lot of carry because of that backspin. Pena at first. Big cut right there. And that advances the count to one and two. If you had to pick a right handed hitter and a left handed hitter who maybe hits the ball harder than anyone. I got to think Cliff's got to be your left handed hitter. Maybe Gary Sheffield, your right-handed hitter. Oh, he's at least the scariest <laughs> from the right side. Getting up there and constantly spitting, and he's got the bat whip going, and there's just a lot of action going on in that batter's box. He is not a fun guy to face. Pena just back in, standing up. Yeah, almost caught him napping there. Almost caught him napping. Two hands on the knees. Didn't look like he was in a in a ready position. Duke Cher with uh, some quick feet. Almost got him. Two and two.
Rays with single markers in each of the first two innings on the Pena home run and the Hensky home run. There goes the runner. Pitch is down and the throw not as good this time. A little bit to the shortstop side of the bag. And Pena has picked up his first stolen base of the year. Carlos here on a 2 2 count. Not a great jump, but he gets going. It was a tougher pitch to handle, and obviously the throw on the third base side. Carlos is able to get in there. And that's what, you know, that's what Joe and and this offense is going to have to do. They're going to have to get creative. They, they, something they've been doing all year, but you're going to have to find different guys stealing bags and different ways to score runs. The foul ball cued down the opposite way. You know, that's the one positive, I think, with this team is, you know, with Evan being out and Carl being out and the loss of that of that offense, you know, they, they've been a team that puts runners in motions, you know, hit and run, a lot of different things. So this isn't new to them. This is not, you know, a, a new way to play, and so just going to have to do more of it and hope to keep things afloat. Take a look at Cliff Floyd tonight's Geico quote on the injury situation. If ever there was a time or part of the season we needed to become a team, have unity. It's now. As he addressed the energies. Oh, strike three call. He thought that pitch was down. And has a parting comment with the plate umpire over that one. Rays are finished in the third. Here's another look at the strikeout pitch. Two nothing, Tampa Bay. Bottom of the third, the Rays with a two nothing lead. They left a man on in the third. Cliff Floyd not happy over that last pitch from Justin Dukesher. And Ryan, if we take a look at this, that might not have been bad pitch that wasn't that bad of a pitch you know it's a it's a backdoor cutter with Dukesher likes to throw it starts off the plate it's easy for a left-handed hitter to give up on it and he's automatically his brains already told him that ball is off the plate and but it you know it looked like it came back and and caught the uh, caught the outside corner so I you know I know Cliff's not real happy with it but that looked to me like a pretty good pitch pitch right at the knees here's Suzuki the catcher turning away from the first pitch one and oh it's also one of those pitches where if you swing at it there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do with it so Cliff was angry for a number of reasons. Ellen the other thing about that actually both these pitchers are around the plate in the strike zone often enough that if there is a borderline call they've got a chance to get it. If you've established yourself you're absolutely right if you've established that you're going to be a strike thrower you're going to get the benefit of the doubt. There's a strike to Suzuki two and one. Sonnenstein gave up a base hit to Ellis to open the first. He then threw a double play ball. The chopper foul. Two and two. Comfortable evening here in Oakland. It's 68 degrees. Clear skies. And the Rays have a two run lead. Haven't seen a cloud since Seattle. Look out, foul back into the stands beyond the Rays dugout. Up the right side, that ball is foul. Slicing down beyond the bullpen. Because of all the foul territory a lot of hitters don't like this part but this guy certainly does he's hitting well over 320 here. Yeah, sometimes they're just are the different mounds there are different parts different batting eyes that guys just have a, a lot of success in a particular place and it's really nice if that place is at home where you're going to play half your games. Ground ball 
through the middle and past the diving Zobritz. DJ returns the ball to the infield. And Suzuki continues his hot hitting with a leadoff single. Well, Suzuki here on a 2-2 count. It's a fastball down and away. Doesn't try to do too much with it. Zobris, great effort there. Doubt he would have probably got him anyway, but was able to squirt through into center field for a base hit. Good job of hitting there by Suzuki. Here's Eric Patterson. Strike one, the young outfielder acquired from the Cubs and the Chicago organization back in July. One and one. Oakland on what will be a six game homestand. The Rays in and then the White Sox come calling. And a swing and a miss. Ball comes up to Navarro. The runner advances. Suzuki alertly advances. And that ball pops straight up. Navi recovered quickly. That's going to be a wild pitch moving Suzuki into second. Well, here it is a curveball down in the dirt. Navi gets in front of it, is able to keep it in front of him. But Suzuki there with a with a nice jump, you know, you, they're taught you, you get that secondary lead. And when you see the ball in the dirt like that, you know, you, you make the break towards second base and all. Although Navi was able to keep it in front, he was not able to keep Suzuki from moving up a bag. And a foul ball. A little piece of it by Patterson. So for the first time tonight, Oakland has a man in scoring position. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Upstairs, fastball high, and it's two and two. Nice fastball up there by design, hoping to get Patterson to chase either for strike three or to get that pop up, something that he's been very good at getting with runners in scoring position, less than two outs. Full count. Check of that runner at second. And a wave and a miss. He came back and got him with a fastball. Just challenged him right there with a full count fastball. Um, was able to squeeze it by him here. As you can see, Andy, 3 2, just went right after him. Nothing surprising about that. Just an 87 mile an hour fastball, outer third. Here it is. See what you can do with it. You got to buy him. Big strike out there. Cliff Pennington, the switch hitting infielder, made his major league debut last night, went 0 for 3. He's hitting 297 at their Triple A affiliate in Sacramento. One and one. You see, sometimes Sonnenstein can lull these hitters into uh, a little slumber. And that fastball at 86 or 87 looks a lot better than you would anticipate that it might. Well, Sonny's one of those pitchers that over the course of a game, he is going to figure out how to get out. I mean, he may not have the, the flashiest stuff and the, you know, the hardest fastball and the best breaking ball. But what he does have is he, he's got a great head on his shoulders and he's got you know some funky mechanics. He'll move his arm angle a little bit and He'll vary the times of his delivery, pause a little bit more. And uh, and you're right, he kind of lulls you to sleep and he'll give you that extra pause and then rush one up there. And he throws that 87, 88 mile an hour fastball, you know, up in the zone. And when it pitches up in the zone, it looks big. I mean, it looks like a beach ball. And, uh, you know, he's able to, you know, get it by some guys and get a lot of pop-ups too. That's the other thing that he's, you know, that he's been very good at getting, you know, is 
putting the ball up in the zone, getting an infield pop up with a runner on third. There's a high popper right there. Aki, that's a big league pop up, by the way. And Aki waited a long time for that one to come down for the second out, but that's a great example of what you were talking about there. Yeah, well, I, that one wasn't on the high one, but he's still been very good at, at getting those. It's just something that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, he induces a lot of those infield pop ups, especially with, with, you know, when there's trouble on the bases and he, he needs to get an out and not allow a runner to move up. Now, Mark Ellis, he tried to check, but could not. That's a strike. Ellis out of the University of Florida. Played shortstop there. And second base in the big leagues. Here in Oakland, they think he should be a gold glove recipient. They love the way he plays second base. Lines it in the left. One hop to Hensky, and they're going to wave the runner home. It's going to be cut off and the throw to the plate in time as Ibar turned and relayed it to Navarro, and they cut down Kurt Suzuki trying to score. That goes 7 5 to 2 to prevent the Oakland run from scoring. Through 3, 2 0 Rays. Those two guys right there, you saw Hinsky in the on deck circle and Ibar headed to the plate. They team up for this defensive play. The extraordinary play of the game brought to you by Infinity. Well, they were going to test Hinsky's arm and very fundamentally sound. He made the throw in, hit the cutoff man, and Willie was able to turn with the relay to Navi and get Suzuki at the plate. Very, very nicely done. This went down to first on the short hop. Hanahan's got it. So two pitches into the fourth, one away with the bases empty. Time for the Aflac trivia question of the night. Who were the first three players taken in the 1993 MLB draft? Any ideas? Some. <laughs> Hinsky with a base hit up the middle. So Eric is two for two, a home run, and now a one out single here in the fourth. Well, the Rays with a hit an inning. Trying to put something together in the fourth after the one out single from Hinsky. And that's what you like to see from a hitter. You know, Hinsky lets the, the fastball in the first at bat get deep, hits it out, home run to left center field, and then takes the off speed curveball right back up the middle, lets you know he's seen the ball well and he's got a real good approach. Here's the honor, the pitch is down. Navarro's average now at 296. It had taken him until yesterday to fall under the 300 mark. What a great year it has been for Deonor Navarro. So strike at the knees. In so many different ways, too. I mean, he, as a game caller, as a catcher, he's taken a lot of pride in, in getting to know his pitchers on an individual basis, not just what the scouting report and the game plan says, but, you know, sitting down with, you know, with a Matt Garza and Andy Sonnenstein and Scott Casimir and saying, how do you want to attack these hitters? And how can I help you behind the plate? Uh, you know, I, I think that just shows the the growth and the and the maturity, you know, of Deonor as a as an all around catcher, not just a you know an offensive threat. Yeah, I think the 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 best thing he said and done this year is to recognize that his first priority was as a catcher, right? Before it was anything else. Yeah, they all don't get that either. And I'll tell you, you, you know, you get a. A catcher back there that you know cares about calling a game and, and puts thought into each pitch that you know that you're going to throw or that at least he's going to call. You may not throw it, but he's going to call it. But there's good thought behind it, and uh, and listens to his pitchers. Boy, that will endear you and keep you around this game for a long time. Well, I tell you, and, and you know much better than I do because you've been out there. But something as basic as a catcher 
who will be active enough to block pitches as oh. opposed to jab at receiving pitches. That means so much. Well, it does. And you're, you're going to come up to a couple different spots in a game where, you know, you want to make a, a throw a put away type pitch. You know, throw a changeup that that may bounce that right on top of the plate, a slider that's going to be down and away, a curveball that may bounce to try to put someone, you know, to, to get a tough out with a guy on third base or a guy on second base with less than two outs. And when you have a catcher back there who's not very active, doesn't take a whole lot of pride in his defense, you'll think twice about throwing that pitch. You shouldn't, but you will. Well, it leaves you shorthanded as a pitcher. Navarro's out on strikes for the second time, two gone. You'd love to be able to use every tool you have to try to get a hitter out. And if you, if you don't have the confidence in your catcher that he can do that for you, you're going to think, two or three times that's right and if, that, if the, you use that at all right and with the limited tool box that I had you <laughs> know there, <laughs> well, there that, wasn't many put away pitches <laughs> in it so I wanted to be able to utilize everything and you wanted to know that hey the guy knows what you're trying to do he knows the pitch that you're going to try and make and he's going to do everything he can you know to keep it in front of him and, and and you know just to be active back there that's what you want you want your catcher to be active you don't want a lot of reaches you want the drop to the knee, get the glove in front of you. And that's where he's come so, such a, a long way this year. Here's Gabe Gross. Runner at first is Hinsky, two gone. Have a strike on the outer part of the plate. Ray's got the home run in the first from Carlos Pena. Hinsky hit the leadoff home run in the second. That's been it in the scoring department. One and one. Well, the Rays three and two on this road trip. Sixteen and eight since the All Star break. Right now, two and a half up on the Red Sox. This one a little wide, two and one. I saw where Mike Lowell was going to have an MRI today because he had uh, a problem. In the uh, game prior to that, he couldn't swing because he had, uh, as what they think is a strained right oblique during that at bat. And that would not be good news for Boston. No, that is a tough injury. I mean, you think about the amount of torque that a pitcher and a hitter put on their torso in, in swinging that bat with, uh, you know, with the power and speed that they do. Uh, and you're talking about a strained oblique that takes a long time just on its own to heal because there's not a lot you can do for it. Yep. There's not many exercises to, to try to strengthen and uh, you know a, an oblique especially when it you know obviously when it's injured so they're going to have to let that heal and then start the movements out slow and uh, you know that's not going to leave a whole lot of time to you know to get back and and play depending on the severity of it but you know you're talking about an injury where you have to go from com letting it sit completely do nothing let it heal strike three call and so he goes on the disabled list today Mike Lowell and we go into the bottom of the fourth here in Oakland Rays lead two to nothing bottom of the fourth coming two nothing Rays lead time for the answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question looking for the first three players taken in the 1993 MLB draft well, we've got a pretty good idea on one of them. That would be Brian Anderson. <laughs> I had two of them. <laughs> Dwayne oh. Stats and Brian Anderson with you from Oakland. Carlos Gonzalez chops the first pitch back strike. We're here along, of course, with Todd Callis. Brian filling in for uh, Joe McGrain, who is uh, covering Olympic baseball. Yes. And uh, Brian, it's uh, great to have you with us. Yeah, well, it's a, it's it's great to be here. I mean, it's uh, it's been such an exciting year. Not, you know, coming into spring training, and obviously, you know, you're going to try to become a player, and then to uh, you know to have the setback with the elbow for the third time, and then get asked to stay on board as you know as an assistant, and then get a chance to come up in the booth with the legendary Dwayne Stats. It's been quite a run for me. Yeah, well, you've been great until just then. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pleasure really uh, and, I, and I know it, it has been quite a year for you because there were plans that uh, 
you could have been on this staff and involved in this whole uh, process that's going on. And as it turns out, you start your uh, coaching career and, and your broadcasting career. Here yeah. we are. Yeah, we're trying a little bit of everything. You know, it, it's funny too because I, you know, was laughing with some of the guys the other day. You know, my idea of coming down to camp was nice pitch right there by Sonnenstein too. That's his second strikeout. And the first out here in the fourth. But uh, you yeah, know exactly what was your plan? Well, my plan was to come in and uh, you know get ready. Hopefully, you know by the All Star break and things started to move a little bit quicker than we had thought. And you know the role that I was going to be in was kind of how JP, you know the role that he had to start out the year. And I was left with the guy saying, you know, if I would have been healthy. I'd probably still be in Durham right now because there's just there was no room for me to come up here. The bullpen has been so good and the and the, and the starters for that matter have been so good. I, I'd probably still be down there. There's a strike and the count is one and one. Well everything happens for a reason and here we are. The Rays approaching the middle of August leading the America League East. It's low, two balls and a strike. That pitch wasn't much different from the one that Cliff Floyd was called out on. And you're talking about two guys that are both very big. Fly ball, center field, and BJ cuts back to his left. That had a little of that knuckling effect on it out there. Yes, it did. You know, when you square a ball up going up the middle, uh, you know, into center field. Through the middle of the field, a lot of times you have to hit that ball square, and when you do, it's going to have some knuckle action to it. That's why, you know, any outfielder will tell you a line drive right at him is the toughest one to judge. You can't tell if it's coming high, if it's coming low, is it knuckling? It's tough for them to read. So that was a nice play by BJ. Well, here's Jack Cuss, the big left handed hitter. 20 home runs. He leads the league in strikeouts and in walks for that matter. All or nothing. Tremendous opposite field power. One and one the count. First two men have been retired by Sonnenstein and Cust. Steps out on him and he's ready to pitch as soon as he gets the ball back from the catcher. Well, you saw the same kind of rhythm in Seattle. You know, he's got a good idea of how he wants to attack these hitters. He's thinking two and three pitches ahead. And he wants to get going. Liner into left. Right there's Hinsky, and it's a one, two, three, fourth. We're headed into the fifth inning in Oakland. And the Rays lead two nothing. Ben Zobrist up there, two pitches into his at bat. One and one the count. Then followed by the top of the order. Line drive, and it's grabbed by Ellis at second base. Pretty good vertical leap on that one to make the catch. Line drive right there, destined for right center field, right at Mark Ellis. Good second baseman jumps up makes the catch. Here's Aki. Aki singled in the third inning and then was caught trying to steal. So he's one for two. One strike the count. Ground ball backhanded by Hanahan. Who's going to cover? Hanahan just beat Aki to the back. Hanahan found himself forcing to make that play. Duke sure did not get over there. Hanahan kind of got caught in no man's land, looking like he wanted to pitch it, realizing the pitcher that Justin was not going to make it over there right there. He's turning, thinking he's going to. Right? Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a tough play right there because in your mind you've, you've worked on that so many times in spring training Hanahan's expecting the pitcher to be there. He's going to make the little shovel pitch. He's not but he's able to beat Aki to the bag. Pitch inside to B.J. Upton. 
A ball no strikes. Two and oh. Rays in Oakland. Little game of the series. Two and one. Day game tomorrow. We'll be with you again on FSN Florida. James Shields against Sean Gallagher. Ground ball for the shortstop. Crosby with the routine play. One, two, three. Go the Rays in the fifth. Through four and a half. Two nothing. Tampa Bay. Two nothing Rays lead fans. This is the summer cash inning brought to you by the Florida Lottery summer cash new from the Florida Lottery so hot someone will win two hundred fifty thousand dollars or one of fifty five free gas prizes every Wednesday. You could even win gas for life. Ask for the summer cash play today and listen for this sound at the terminal. You're a summer cash winner. Bobby Crosby taking a strike. Pitch inside. And it's one and one. Well, that's what I'd like to see Andy start doing a whole lot more of is pitching inside. Something he's kind of shied away from, you know, this year. And he, he's been a guy that, that, for the most part, pitches away, changes speeds, does a nice job doing that. But when you don't pitch in off the plate and make these guys respect that ball, that fastball in. There's a shot down the line toward the corner and left. That's a fair ball that one hops the wall. Going to be a two base hit for Crosby. A double to lead off the fifth. Well, here's the pitch that Sonny throws. It's kind of a, a front door breaking ball, something that he's been working on, just having to catch too much of the plate. And you know that's what you're talking about. You want Sonnenstein when he pitches in, you want him to pick his spots, and but not to live in. Them. You don't want you know he threw the fastball in for a ball, came back with another fastball that he fouled back, and then tried to front door, front door the breaking ball. And, and while that's a it's a good sequence, you get the guy looking in there. All of a sudden he starts laying for that pitch and is able to get to it. You like to see him uh, you know pick his spots and not not go in there three straight pitches. Jack Hanahan fouls a fastball strike one but he, getting back to the previous point he does need to pitch in there because when if he doesn't what it forces him to do is to be perfect on his pitches away he leaves him very little margin for error so you'd like to see him come back in there uh, you know to come in there more often than he has but not living there. one and one to count on him. The double for Crosby was his 31st of the year. And the fourth hit given up by Sonnenstein tonight. And he's ahead of Hanahan. One ball, two strikes. Andy has lost both his starts against Oakland this year. And they've been by significant margins of nine to one and eight to one. He leads two to nothing in the bottom of the fifth tonight. And a little popper into short center. That's going to fall in front of Upton. Crosby will advance to third and stop there. And here in the fifth, the A's put up a threat. Double by Crosby, looping single by Hanahan. Nobody out. No, this is where it's about damage control. You're going to try to. They've got runners on first and third now. Nobody out. In your mind, you almost concede the runner from third base scoring, but you'd love to get a double play ball right here. But right now, it's about damage control, being smart with your pitches. Well, here's Kurt Suzuki. His average overall 289 and 295 
with men in scoring position. One ball, no strikes. The other side of that, though, Suzuki has grounded in to 15 double plays. Great spot for number 16. Moves away from the pitch and the count is one and one. Oakland with a man at third and first. Andy just losing a little bit of rhythm right now. Suzuki likes to get his arms extended, dive, get the, the ball that's out over the plate. He's trying to come in with the fastball and the breaking ball. Just a little out of whack. And he picks up a strike, makes it three and one. Crosby third, Hanahan first. And there's ball four. So it's going to load the bases with nobody out. Well, that's going to bring pitching coach Jim Hickey to the mound. Try to calm down his pitcher. Fans always want to know what's that pitching coach saying out there, Brian? I'm going to tell you what. There, there's probably not a, a pitcher out there that'll tell you he can remember anything the pitching coach says. I, I think that really, that at the end of the day, that these meetings are more about you know buying you time because they're going to come out and say, hey, look, let's slow things down, let's work down in the zone. You know, maybe they give you a quick scouting report. Hey, this guy's runners in scoring positions. He's going to be aggressive. So, you know, figure out what you guys want to start him off with, and then off he goes. Yep. But it's just more about breaking up the rhythm, giving Changing you a little bit of a breather. A bit. That's right. That's right. Well, he's given them all of that. Hickey back into the dugout. The bases are loaded with nobody out. Eric Patterson will be up there. Sonnenstein struck him out swinging. He went to 3 2 and threw a fastball by him. So he's 0 for 1. Ground ball first, and it skips beneath the mitt of Pena. Crosby scores. Hanahan heads to the plate. Over to third goes Suzuki, and Patterson is aboard at first. This game is tied. Sharply hit. He got it by Pena. Well, you know, that's what Andy wanted to do. Keep the ball down in the zone, try to keep it on the ground. It's exactly what it did, but it was able to skip by. That ball's down. Patterson gets on top of it, but he did hit it pretty hard, and it was just able to, to squirt underneath the backhand of Carlos Pena, a play that he normally makes. That's a play that you usually see him get leather on, but, you know, that ball was hit pretty hard, and got under the glove and down into the corner and scored two runs. First and third with nobody out. Here's Pennington. Waving and missing. That's a strike. You know, that's the frustrating part of the game, you know, for a pitcher. You have the bases loaded. You know you're in trouble. You get the hard ground ball that, you know, game of inches. He's able to come up with that. You got a potential double play out of it, and maybe you can weasel your way out of the inning. Now you're looking at... Uh, you know, you're in a dog fight now. Wave and a miss. So the double by Crosby to start the inning. Hanahan singled and then Suzuki walked to load him. And on the sharply hit ball by Patterson, Payne has been charged with an error and two runs have scored to tie the game. And there is strike three call. Pennington caught looking at a very important strikeout for Sonnenstein. No, he needed that. Andy coming right here. <laughs> Fastball just on the outside corner. Nothing surprising about that. He went after him. He was able to get him to swing through a couple of pitches earlier 
in the at-bat, and he just challenged him with the fastball there right on the black. Nice pitch. Now here's Ellis. The pitch is a strike. Ellis is two for two. He can be a battling out up there. He's tough. Hitting 231 to start the night, but he's a better hitter than that. Down to third. High bar to second. Hockey to first to Pena around the horn. 5 4 3. And that was damage control. Double play ball out of Ellis. And at the end of five, we're tied 2 2. The sixth inning from Oakland. After further review, they have taken the air off the scoreboard on the ball hit by Patterson. That's a base hit for Patterson. So he'll get two runs batted in. We're tied 2 2. Carlos Pena will open the sixth. Carlos has homered and has been hit by a pitch, and he takes the first one in for a strike. Pena, Floyd, and then Ibar. Well, we're in a four inning sprint at this point. Sharply hit foul down beyond the dugout. Two strikes. Rays with two runs, four hits off Dukeshire. One ball, two strikes. We're in the sixth. Upstairs. Two and two now. It was Pena's 22nd home run of the year back in the first that gave the Rays an early lead. Harry Kinski hit a leadoff home run in the second to make it two to nothing. Oakland ties it with two in the bottom of the fifth. And there's strike three call to Carlos. Strikeout number six for Dukeshire. And let's go to the very patient Todd Callis. Todd. <laughs> Hey, Dwayne, and some good news today on Jason Bartlett. Speaking of patience, he hasn't had a chance to play the field since he was hit by a pitch in that game against the Tigers of Tropicana Field. Joe Madden today for the first time said Bartlett is available in a late inning situation on defense tonight. He said he could envision himself by putting Bartlett in as a pinch runner, then switching Zobris over to third and putting Bartlett in at short. So that's a good sign. Bartlett could start a game very soon, but he is available for a late inning defensive replacement tonight, guys. All right, thank you very much. Of course, the other news. Carl Crawford will uh, undergo surgery on that right middle finger tomorrow. That'll take place in Arizona. There's a pop up foul coming straight back. The count is one and one on Cliff Floyd. And they're projecting six to eight weeks on that, hoping that he can come back by the end of the regular season. So Hinsky's out there in left field. Justin Ruggiano, who has been recalled from Durham, started in left field last night. Not the time of year you want to have serious injuries. And Floyd is out on strikes. Back to back strikeouts to open the sixth. Two gone with the bases empty. You can get in early on the 09 Rays action with exclusive on field seating at the Checkers Bullpen Cafe in right field. The remaining dates in the 08 season are sold out, but you can make plans for next year by calling 727 825 3406 or online at RaysBaseball.com. Willie Ibar looks at one too low, a ball no strikes. Ibar playing third base. 
He'll get most of the starts until Evan Longoria returns from the disabled list. And the Rays are projecting that, hoping that that'll be uh, certainly by the 1st of September. Ground ball picked up by Ellis. His throw to first. It's a 1 2 3 6. We're through five and a half, tied 2 2. Carlos Gonzalez, the center fielder, leads off the bottom of the sixth. Lifts a high foul third base side, but that's going to be out of reach. Strike one. Gonzalez, then Frank Thomas and Jack Cusp. Two six and zero for Oakland. Two four and zero for the Rays. Andy Sonnenstein delivers. 0-2 the count. Andy's walked one, struck out three. Touch for the two runs in the fifth. And the foul ball. Boy, it's always tough to pitch around a leadoff double, statistically speaking. That guy, if he leads on with a two base hit, you really got to do something to prevent him from scoring. Well, there's just so many ways to get him in. I mean, you've got three shots. If you're going to swing, you can bunt him over, and then a ground ball will get him in. I mean, there's just so many different ways to, to, to score that run. And, you know, as a, and as a pitcher, you, you get a, a leadoff double, you got a guy on second base, and it really, a lot of times, changes the way you pitch, not that it should. Back at third, hustling out there, eye bar, and that's foul. He just couldn't find it. Nope. And it's a foul ball. Fortunately for the Rays, it turns out to be foul. Yeah, sometimes those pop-ups that go right over top of your head are the hardest ones to get back to because you're not running at a very hard angle. And yeah, Willie just couldn't get there. Went right over your head. You're kind of almost running straight back. That would have been a a tough catch but it's a lot easier when you're kind of running at an angle 45 degree angle and you can keep the play in front of you keep the ball in front of you but when you have to turn and run and you end up with your back to home plate trying to make that play that's difficult. So the counts of all two strikes to Carlos Gonzalez. Bounds it again, so he extends this at bat. Here leading off the bottom of the sixth. This will be the eighth pitch coming from Sonnenstein. And he got him. Slow breaking ball. Nice pitch by Andy. Yeah. Threw everything but the kitchen sink at him that at bat. Oh, man. Carlos Gonzalez doing a good job of fouling off pitches and then Sonny nice curveball right down to the dirt took a little something off it got him out in front racks up another strikeout this big Frank Thomas has gone out twice to Hinsky and left tonight pitches down Thomas came into the game hitting 253 overall but a little over 290 with Oakland. Guys that foul the other way and out of play. It's one and one. He had a little extra motivation coming out here after the manner in which he was mm -hmm. let go in Toronto. Trying to show everybody that he's still got something left. There's a strike and it's one and two. Where's it? Rays in Oakland, bottom of the sixth inning. It's cussed on deck. 
little part of this order featuring some power in Thomas and Cust. And a liner that's foul headed beyond the bullpen down in the direction of the Oakland bullpen. Allenstein 11 and 6 on the year. And did he go? Yes, he did. Thomas out on strikes on the appeal. Here's Sonny comes up in the zone a little bit. And right there, Frank Thomas commits. Easy call for the first base umpire. Another strikeout. You know, so many times too on on that particular play. You know, everybody talks about the bat breaking the plane of the plate, and uh, you know, did he go to the bat head go too far? It's actually the umpire's discretion, and the rule is is if there was intent. Did he intend to swing? No matter how far the bat went, did it, if it came over, you know, home plate. That's uh, that's not exactly the the rule as it's written and, and interpreted. Jack Cuss takes a strike. One and one. Breaking ball drops in there. And it's one and two. Two outs, bases empty. One and two. Cuss stepping back. Swing and a miss. He got him. Big cut right there by Cuss. Sonnenstein strikes out the side. He got Gonzalez, Thomas, and Cuss. One, two, three. We're tied. We're tied two-two as this game moves into the seventh inning tonight. Fans, tune in Monday at 10 p.m. for Inside the Rays. For where are they now? Episode. Find out what former Rays Doug Creek and Wade Boggs have been doing since the end of their playing days. For a preview of the show, log on to fsnflorida.com and click on the Rays link. That'll be Monday. 10 p.m. Two balls, no strikes. The count to Eric Hinsky, leading off Hinsky, Navarro, and Gross. He's out in front of the off speed pitch. Now it's two and one. The left hander Blevins throwing in the bullpen. And a one hopper and it skips past Ellis. Boy Ellis thought he was going to make that play and it skipped right by him. And so Hensky is on for the third straight time. I don't know if that ball caught the grass. And actually skipped right by him because it looked like he had that uh, drawn up to where he was going to be able to make the play, and it just hit and squirted right by him. You see, Hinsky, another nice job of hitting. He's gone to left, he's gone up the middle, he takes the inside pitch, hits it hard to the right side, and that may have just caught the edge of the grass and gets a little bit wet at night, a little bit of dew, and squirted right out there in the right field. So Deanna Navarro is the hitter and a toss to first. Hinsky is back in there. <laughs> the 
as a strike. So DeHonor looking for his first hit tonight. He reached last night on an error, so he's looking for his first hit of the series. A little tap. That's a foul ball. Thankfully. <laughs> oh, two the count to Deonor. Rays facing 30 year old right hander. Justin Dukeshire. At a hundred pitches. Navarro fouls it. The last four starts, Dukeshire has gone 0-2 with a 5.63 earned run average, a couple no decisions and two losses in that stretch. One thing that you have to say about Dukeshire is he's been Consistent little hiccup in the last couple of starts, but and he gets Navarro on strikes. Well, the last four outs he's recorded have come on strikeouts. Something that he's not known for. But anyway, getting back to what we were talking about, Dukeshire, you know, his 20 starts coming into tonight, he's given up two runs or less in 16 of them. I mean that is uh, well it's an all star type of year that's that's just consistency you know what you're going to get from this guy each and every time he goes out there and even tonight you know, he gives up a couple of home runs something he hasn't done all year early in the game and has settled down now and pitched his team out into the seventh inning still only having given up those two runs. Here's Gabe Gross. He takes a healthy cut and misses strike one. Gabe struck out looking on a pitch away his last time up there. One and one. The Rays had base runners in each of the first four innings. They got the leadoff hit here in the seventh. One on one out. Two and one. Trying to nibble on that outside corner. That's where they've gone with Gabe all night long, knowing that anything close to him, especially if it's down, that's his nitro zone. If you're not playing, that's one of the favorite places for a hitter, right next to the bat rack. Justin Ruziano down there as Gross swings and misses to run the count to two and two. The way that they play with those things. Getting them ready. A hitter in his natural environment. Right next to the bat rack. And they've got their go to gamer. A little number third base side will be charged by Pennington and he cannot make the play. Hinsky advances to second. That will be an infield hit for Gross. Well that's the way they were going to attack him. They kept going away down and away. That's where you're going to try to get Gabe Gross out but he did a nice job of reaching out there and poking that thing and kind of out in no man's land. Backdoor breaking ball here off the end of the bat. Pennington coming in. It's a do or die play. It's going to be tough either way, and he tries to go the backhand glove route and doesn't work. Bob Guerin comes out to make a pitching change. That's going to be it for Duke. Sure, he's not happy with the situation. Back in a moment. And Justin Ruggiano will come on now to pinch run for Hinsky.
Jerry Blevins the lefty the new pitcher his first one in there a strike call Jerry Blevins is 18th game of the year pitched two innings last night good ERA almost a strikeout an inning holding hitters to a 159 average riding the hot hand Bob Guerin is well, Blevins has allowed only one of 14 inherited runners to score so that's what Bob Guerin is thinking about right now. Turn, but nothing going back at second. Ruggiano back in. Zobris fouls it away, then hitting right handed here against the lefty. This is where having that switch hitter is so valuable. You know, with Willie Ibar and Ben Zobris, if they want to play matchup baseball, just flip them around. And a ground ball base hit. Pass the bag at third and up the left field line. Ruggiano's going to score. They will hold Gross at third. A double for Zobrist, and the Rays take a three to two lead. Well, Ben Zobrist once again with a clutch hit, something he's been doing a whole lot of this year. He gets a, a breaking ball out over the plate, gets the head out, and keeps it just inside the bag down the left field line. Just did not let that ball finish its break. Blevins left the one out there a little bit up in the strike zone. And ben did a nice job of keeping that ball fair. So the two base hit for Zobris his fourth double. He's at second over at third is gross. The infield comes in. Aki even more of the hitter against Blevins. And that soft breaking ball is in for a strike. So the Rays again out in front this time three to two. The pitch up and Aki did not go on the appeal down to Brian Onora. One and one to count. Breaking ball and he checked on that one. Two balls and a strike. Brandon Nora not making many fans here at the Coliseum. <laughs> Levin's one of three lefties in Oakland's bullpen. That's a strike on the outer edge. They have another one up down the left field line. The veteran Alan Embry. Embry more the strikeout power lefty. Blevins with a sweeping breaking ball. And a swing and a miss. Hockey's out on strikes. That'll be out number two of the inning. And we'll get BJ Upton to the plate. No, that's nothing new for Blevins. He was holding left-handed hitters to an 087 average, two for 23 on the year. And uh, he kind of lulls Aki to sleep with the breaking stuff and then comes right back in there with the fastball. And you got the, you know, he has such a good sweeping breaking ball that you have to respect that as a hitter, especially a left-handed hitter. And so you find yourself with two strikes automatically starting to look for that. And he's able to sneak the pat the fastball by you. Well, B.J. Upton is receiving an intentional walk with first base already open, so that will load the bases and set up the lefty lefty matchup with Carlos Pena due to come to the plate. 
Take another oh, look at Embry. So the bases are loaded. Hinsky opened this inning with a base hit. And with one out, went to second on the infield hit by Gross. Ruziano came on to run for Hinsky. And with Blevins taking over in place of Dukesher, Ben Zobris went to 1 2 and shot a double up the left field line to give the Rays the lead. Now they have the bases loaded with two outs. And it will be Blevins and Pena the matchup. Carlos has homered. He's been hit by a pitch and was called out on strikes. And he takes a pitch inside. A fastball, 1 0. Carlos lifted a fly ball to right last night against Blevins. Swings through this one, and the count is one and one. Red Balfour up in the Rays bullpen. Up and away, two and one. Carlos up there with them loaded. Pretty impressive career numbers with the bases loaded. A lot of times you know, it gives them a great opportunity to kind of keyhole. They know the pitcher doesn't want to walk them. Two and two. Swings through it. And he, yeah, he's gotten two fastballs this at bat that, that uh, we've all seen Carlos handle in the past. And Blevins has gotten by him, but. So many times, like I said, you know, you're you got a pitcher out there. You know, he doesn't want to walk you. It relaxes you as a hitter, knowing that you can just pick, a, you know, pitch out in a certain spot. And some guys are really good at it, and some aren't. The two-two, all three, and we've gone all the way full. They're loaded. Baldelli has moved on deck. Three and two. Blevins to Pena. Runners go. And a foul ball will do it again. Rays will have Gross at third. Zobrist at second. Upton at first. It'll be interesting to see here if he goes to the breaking ball. They've been pounding him nothing but fastballs. Trying to get that. Fastball in close to Pena and above his hands, where his natural uppercut will swing under it. He fouls this one back, so he's battling 3 2. <laughs> 3 2 with the bases loaded, even lefty lefty matchup. A lot of pressure on that guy out there on the mound. It's absolutely nowhere to put him. A lot at stake. 3 2 again. And a foul ball once more. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat. Not too easy on a manager looking on either. Out of his control. 3 2 again. And a foul ball once more. Well, they keep trying to run that fastball. Well, you can see it. I mean, this is just a matter of who is going to execute better. I'm going to throw a fastball middle in, try to get it above your hands. And Carlos is trying to get the bat head to it. Oakland walk up to Delotum to get to Pena. The 3 2 one more time. And a high fly ball lifted into short left. Patterson in makes the catch and that retires the side a 10 pitch at bat Ray score run to take the lead three to two.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Tampa Bay Rays and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Rays. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning here in Oakland. Justin Ruggiano stays on to play left field. The Rays make a change on the mound. Andy Sallenstein works six. Grant Balfour on to work the seventh inning, making his 30th appearance. Balfour three and one, the opposition hitting 111 against him. Has been nothing short of brilliant all year long. So consistent starting in Triple A and first pitch to Bobby Crosby is a strike. Coming through the call up and he just gets out there a, a high energy guy once he gets out on the mound just attacks hitters. And a ground ball headed up the middle and a base hit into center. So Crosby hit the fastball right back into center has his second hit. Well, there's not a, a big question of what you're going to get when you face Grant Balfour. You know you're going to get a mid 90s fastball and most of the time he's going to keep it away from you. And ball was elevated just a little bit and Bobby Crosby stayed behind it drove it right back up the middle it's what good hitters do and now yeah. on first base with nobody out Jack Hanahan the left handed hitter at the plate and a bunt back to the mound and a look to second but the plays at first Pena back to take the throw Crosby moves into second. Boy, I think if that's do or die, that would have been a close play at second, but any hesitation whatsoever, you need to readjust the sights, go to first base, and, and get the out. But that would have been interesting to see if he could have got him at second base. That's just one of those plays, though, as a pitcher, if there is any doubt in your mind, it, it's, a, it's a throw you can't make. You've got to take the out, and with him being... You know, a power guy can get some strikeouts. Still gives him a chance to get out of this inning. Well, he faces Kurt Suzuki, the catcher, who singled to open the third and was thrown out trying to score eventually. He walked in the fifth. And the fastball is high. One ball, no strikes. Embry has been joined by Brad Sigler. One and all the count to the Oakland catcher. Blown away. Six innings for Sadenstein. He gave up two runs, six hits, struck out six, and walked one. Another solid out, outing by Andy. That's what he does. He goes out there, eats up the innings, and gives you a chance to win. Swing and a miss. Hard stop by him. Two and one. Yeah, that's the one thing about Sonnenstein, probably uh, above everything else. He has given the Rays innings and Almost every start, the club's in a position to win that start. By very definition, that's what a starting pitcher, that's, that's what he's all about. You know, the thing about Andy, he kind of gets lost in the shuffle because he doesn't have the flashy stuff. He's not throwing 95 miles an hour. But what he does know how to do is to pitch. And he knows how to be competitive out there, how to make adjustments during the course of the game that will allow him to get those last three or four tough outs and give you a chance. 3 1, and he pops him up. Right side, Pena and Eva Mora. Aki's going to make the catch. Two gone. So a pop up, two outs with a runner still at second. And the left fielder Eric Patterson who hit the ball sharply and got it by Pena in the fifth inning to drive in both Oakland runs is up again with a man in scoring position this time in the seventh inning.
upstairs. One and zero. Foul four on in the seventh. High again. Two and nothing. Balfour worked an inning last night. Gave up a hit and picked up a couple of strikeouts. Made 19 pitches in that one. He worked an inning on Saturday, had Sunday off, and pitched back to back days Friday and Saturday in Seattle. Three and nothing the count. And it looks like he's jumping a little bit in his delivery. Something that he needs to. Uh, to battle from time to time because he is such an aggressive pitcher and uh, a lot of times you want to jump out there and get a little bit long in your stride. And this one is low. So he walks Patterson. Two men on with two men out. The rookie Pennington is due but he will not bat. Derek Barton. So Barton will come off the bench. Barton, as you can see right there, hitting 210 with five home runs on the year. And the first time he has seen Balfour in his career. He starts him with a strike. Oh, there's no secret where you're going to get from Grant. It's just a matter of you're going to be able to catch up to it. He makes no bones about what his plan of attack is. That's the hard stuff. And a strike. And if you're putting it on the black like that, there's not a whole lot you're going to do with it. Something that he's been great at. He has been, wherever he's been throwing that fastball, away to righties, away to lefties, he finds the black an awful lot. And it makes that 95, 96 mile an hour fastball almost unhittable. Strike three call. And boy, what a perfect pitch that was. He gets the pinch hitter, Barton. And so the seventh inning is over, and the Rays lead three to two. Three two, the Rays lead as this game moves into the eighth. Time for the stay in the game hold of the day, brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color. And we look at the Rays bullpen and holds Wheeler with 25, Howell with 12, Miller seven, Balfour six, and Percival two. Just as middle relievers keep their teams in the game. You too can stay in the game with just for men hair color. Rocco Ball Deli will lead off the eighth against Allen Embry. Pitch is wide. You saw Wheeler throwing in the bullpen for the Rays and defensive changes for Oakland. Derek Barton stays on to play first and Jack Hanahan moves over to play third. Rocco looks at a strike. Alan Embry for Oakland coming on for the 52nd time one and four record 5.4 ERA. He's given up six home runs. Well Delhi pops it back foul that's out of play. There's a lot of unknown factors in the Rocco ball Delhi story but it's it's so great to see him playing and in uniform. And we don't know. I don't know if Rocco really knows for sure going ahead. But when you watch him in batting practice, he's still got it. Oh, he does. He's got a great approach. He he he's one of those guys that takes batting practice as an opportunity 
to work on his craft. He's not out there just he can launch. I mean he can hit home runs. He can whenever he wants to. And uh, you know and occasionally he will but he is out there working on hitting hitting the other way hitting pitches you know where they are relative to the strike zone. If there any tries to pull them if they're away he'll tell them throw me away I want to work on going to right field. He just takes it very serious and works at it. Swing and a miss. He's out on strikes. Pinch hitting for the D.H. Floyd. That's 10 strikeouts tonight for Oakland pitching. Now we talked about it. Alan Embry, a strikeout pitcher. Fastball down and away on the black. It's a tough pitch to handle. Has enough hair to get by. It's Willie Ibar gives him a chance to bat right handed. Pitch is down. Both his home runs in that two home run game in Seattle came as a right handed hitter. Rays have a 3 2 lead in this game in the eighth. Two balls, no strikes. Red Sox beat Texas earlier tonight, eight to four. Minnesota beat the Yankees in Minnesota, four to two. Three and zero, the count to Ibar. And there is ball four too low. So with a man at first one out let's check in with Todd Callis. When you were mentioning Carl Crawford having the hand surgery tomorrow in Arizona. Oh, Ken Rosenthal on Fox Sports dot com <laughs> mentions that two different okay. Mariners got claimed yesterday <laughs> off of waivers Jared Washburn and Roll Abanez and in the process teams have till tomorrow at 1 30 Eastern to try and make a trade for one or the other of those players Rosenthal Rosenthal also mentioned on his article on Fox Sports.com the Rays and Abanez could be a perfect fit if in fact the Rays didn't get blocked from making that claim since they have the second best record in the American League. So we'll see what happens by tomorrow guys. Yeah you can still make deals but you've got to do it through the waiver process. It just makes it a little more complicated. It, yeah it gets tricky and it doesn't uh, it doesn't help with with Boston and New York being able to put in waiver claims before you do I would be shocked to see Raul Banya's be able to get down to to Tampa for a claim. Ruggiano he entered the game as a pinch runner in the seventh Justin batting for the first time tonight. One ball no strikes. You know you'd figure with with Boston claiming Brian Giles mm -hmm. uh, for the for fear of of him coming down and, and us maybe putting a you know a, a claim on him. Then, boy, to get Raul Banez down through there, that, that's going to be difficult. Strike on the outside edge. One and one. High bar at first here in the eighth. Up and away. Two balls and a strike. Embry, the third pitcher for Oakland. Luciano fouls one back and out of play to square it. Two and two. Pitch is wide. Full count to Justin Ruggiano. It's 
Zobris got the double in the seventh that gave the Rays the lead. Now 3 2 to Ruggiano. And he's out on strikes. Ruggiano, second strikeout of the inning for Embry. Two outs with a runner aboard. And let's check out this day in baseball history brought to you by Nissan on this date in 1979. Lou Brock with a base hit off right hander Dennis Lamp became the 14th member of the 3000 hit club on that August night in St. Louis. Here's Deanna Navarro fouling one back strike one. Navarro 0 for 3 so he looks for his first hit of the evening. One ball, one strike. Alan Embry is the left-handed version of Grant Balfour. Four-seamer after four-seamer, down and away. Deanna roll for two, lifetime against him. A 1-1 one, one count. Wheeler waiting in the bullpen down the right field line. Oakland will have the top of its order due. And a ground ball through the right side for a base hit. Ibar will stop at second. So Deonor has himself a single. Two men on with two men out. Good piece of hitting here. Deanna gets a fastball down and away. Let's that ball get deep on him. There's not a whole lot he could do with it except to to put a ground ball to the right side and pick the perfect spot. Squeeze it in there between first and second base for a base hit. Gets runners uh, runner into scoring position here with two outs. Well a big base hit perhaps by Navarro. Gabe Gross. Gross reached on an infield hit in the seventh. He is one of two lifetime against this lefty. It takes a good look at that one low. One ball, no strikes. Rays trying to add to their lead. It stands at one. Down and in, and a stop by Suzuki. A real good play by Suzuki, reaching back on that fastball and not letting it get back to the screen. Ibar walked. He moved to second on the two-out single by Navarro. A strike of the knees. Moves the count along to two and one. Rays have managed three runs tonight on eight hits. Oakland two runs, seven hits. And a little broken bat looper foul back a third. It's going to square the count. The A's have gotten Houston Street up in the bullpen. The count has gone 2 2 to Gross. Two two. Oh, strike three call on the outside edge. Gross thought that pitch was wide. Two men left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Three two Rays. 
three two the Rays lead as we got to the bottom of the eighth inning time for the checkers double of the game the Rays have turned in a couple very big double plays in the first on Carlos Gonzalez it goes Carlos Pena bends over us back to Pena and in the fifth on a ball hit by Mark Ellis around the horn I bar even more at a Pena pitcher's best friend that double play Dan Wheeler comes on for the 51st time he is two and five with a 272 earned run average the opposition hitting 188 off him and he will face the top of the Oakland order the A's leaving a couple of men on in the bottom of the seventh so it'll be Ellis Gonzalez and Thomas do up Mark Ellis two for three tonight and the first pitch a wave and a miss strike one. Wheeler with a little action down on the fastball that time. And that's when he's good when he's getting good leverage on the fastball keeping it down the zone that plays right in to the very good slider that he has and so when he's able to spot that fastball and keep it down the zone it makes the slider that much better. Ahead in the count, two strikes. Sonnenstein for six, Balfour for one. Pitch up. One ball, two strikes. Salenstein gave up two runs on six hits. Balfour, no runs, one hit in the inning he worked. And a swing and a miss. Ellis out on strikes. So Wheeler with the fastball picks up a strikeout of the leadoff man. Nobody. Important to keep him off the bases. Here he is elevating the fastball out over the plate, kind of tied him up a little bit. So often Dan Wheeler is working down 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 in the zone he elevates a fastball there and gets it by Mark Ellis for out number one. The young outfielder Carlos Gonzalez. 270 average nothing of three on the night. And there's a strike. Frank Thomas kneeling on deck. Down and in. Ziegler has joined Street in the bullpen for Oakland. He's been up a couple times tonight. Boy, he's been great out of their bullpen. Video game numbers. One and one. Gonzalez lays off, down and in. Two and one. Wheeler's had a couple days off. He last worked on Saturday in the extra inning game up in Seattle. Swing and a miss, and the count squares. It's two two. Little game of this series. Day game tomorrow, and it will be James Shields against Sean Gallagher. The 2 2. And a foul back. Straight back off the fastball. So Ellis has struck out Gonzalez with a count of two balls two strikes. And a step back now by Gonzalez. 
And a loose ball out in left field. Red Sox winners over Texas. Minnesota winners over the Yankees in Minnesota. The Rays started the day with a three game lead two and a half after the Boston win. And a shot up the right side that's foul. Full foul hook down the right side. That holds the count at two and two. Standings up to date right now. Ray's trying to run that back to three over Boston, two and a half at the moment. Two two, and there's ball three. The count goes full. Well, they got ahead of them. Now it's full. That was a pretty good pitch. And the three two he got him he struck him out. He went three two and picks up the second out of the inning strikeouts of Ellis and Gonzalez. Well here he is a close pitch to run the count full and then he just comes up and in Carlos Gonzalez a little bit of a longer swing right there and he's able to to sneak it in close to him and get it above his hands for out number two huge. I want to put a runner on huge. Him. Here's Frank Thomas. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very large man. The veteran DH. He looks it over and it's too low. A ball, no strikes. Fly ball, line drive, and a strikeout tonight for Thomas. Came into the game hitting over 290 in an Oakland uniform. A little over 250 for the year. One and oh. That's a strike on the outer part of the plate. One and one. Another close one tonight. And the one one pitch. Swing and a fly ball toward right center. Here comes Gross to make the catch, and that retires the side. So it's a one, two, three, eighth. We'll head into the ninth, three, two, Tampa Bay. Three, two, as we go to the ninth, the Rays on top. You can catch all the excitement of Rays baseball. Act now to secure your opportunity to purchase postseason ticket packages by placing a deposit on your 2009 season tickets. Visit RaysBaseball.com. For more details, Ben Zobrist takes the pitch wide. Houston Street, the new pitcher. Well, Ben is one of those guys, Brian, we talked about earlier tonight. Trying to pick up some of the deficit left by the Rays have suffered. And he doubled home. But at the moment, is the difference in this ball game. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have different guys step up and. You know, like I said, you know earlier, th this is a team that that hasn't ridden just one horse this whole season. It, it's been a lot of different guys pitching in, and you know the the thing I love about this team is when you look at it, they can win games so many different ways. They can win games by scoring a lot of runs. They can win games by you know timely hitting, good starting pitching, shut down bullpen work. I mean, we've even seen some games where they've won on great defensive plays. They win games so many different ways, and it just allows for so many different guys to step up Ben being one of them Ben lifts a fly ball back toward left center field the center fielder Gonzalez makes the catch that's the first out Troy Percival up in the Rays bullpen Harry Kinski hit the home run in the second inning. Here's hockey. 
And the pitch to him is a strike on the outside edge. Hockey one for four. We'll take the count to nothing and two. Carlos Pena opened the scoring with a home run back in the first. Pitch off the plate. One and two. Oh, that one skipping all the way to the backstop. The count is square to. Akadori Iwamura. Street the fourth Oakland pitcher of the night. Hockey goes the other way foul with it. It's two and two. You know you usually don't see Houston Street in a situation like this. Uh, having lost the, the closers job to, to Brad Ziegler. But uh, he's out there hoping that he can hold Tampa Bay, pull him down to this one run lead, and give his offense a chance. And there's ball three. So it's a full count. One out, base is empty. And a liner foul again down that left field side. Forcing another 3 2 pitch from Houston Street to Aki. And he draws the walk. So Iwamura goes to first. Real good at bat there by Augie. Worked the count, fouled off some tough pitches. Was able to coax a walk out of him. Well, let's see what BJ can do against Street. He takes that pitch, and that's a strike. Aki back in at first. Aki was aboard in the third on a base head and eventually was thrown out trying to steal. Ground ball right side. Ellis with a long throw back to second to get the lead man. Aki is forced Ellis to Crosby and Upton reaches. Well there was no way they were going to be able to turn two on that play trying to keep the uh, lead runner off a of second base Alice going deep into the hole and having to throw that falling away not getting a whole lot on it but still just in time to get Aki at second base. Well Carlos Pena is going to be the hitter. And Upton is the base runner. Two outs. BJ draws the throw over from Street. But Pena had that prolonged at bat with the bases loaded in the seventh inning against the left hander Blevins. He worked the count full and eventually to a 10 pitch at bat before he hit the fly ball to left. Pitch out, nothing doing. Rays took the lead with a run on the seventh inning. Carlos one for three lifetime against Street that hit a home run. The pitch is down two and zero, oh. 
And that one hit being a home run might keep Upton at first base here. We'll see what he does 2 and 0. Oh. Now ball three. Street being careful with Pena. Rocco Baldelli's on deck. Should Carlos keep the inning going? Yeah, I don't know if he wants any part of Carlos. That 2 0 fastball, the catcher was. Actually sitting up off the plate almost like the unintentional intentional. I don't know why you would uh, why he would want to do that but he uh, was not close on the 2 0 fastball. And he throws a strike here. That always, that always gets me always gets me the 2 0 fastball they're going to try to pick throw it 8 10 inches off the plate and then 3 0 they come back right down the middle. Now it's three and one. And ball four down and in. So a couple walks in the inning. Upton goes to second. Pena takes over at first. Rocco Baldelli is due to hit. So with two men on and two men out here in the ninth, we'll remind you that Sunday, August 31st is family fun day. Presented by the St. Petersburg Times when the first 7,500 kids 14 and under receive an inflatable Raymond presented by MIS 100.7. So call 888-FAN-RAYS or visit RaysBaseball.com today. Delhi struck out pinch hitting and hits this one back to the hill street has it and it tossed the first in time Rays leave a couple we go to the bottom of the ninth Rays lead this game 3 2 we go to the bottom of the ninth crowd of twenty one thousand four hundred thirty eight here moving Rays fans decked out in Rays gear and Troy Percival. Troy Percival on for the 40th time, 2 0 record. 36 strikeouts. He's got 26 saves. And this is exactly how you draw it up. You have Andy Sonnenstein go six innings. Grant Balfour, Dan Wheeler bridge the gap to Troy Percival, your closer. Well, they'll face Jack Cusk, the big left handed hitter. Percival trying to close this one for Sonnenstein. He has five of his saves for Andy Sonnenstein this year. And the pitch is a first pitch strike. Throws him a fastball. Just nothing of three. Fly ball line drive and a strikeout. Ball one strike. Percival picked up his 26th save in the 11 inning victory last Saturday against Seattle. That was on his 39th birthday. High pop foul back and out of play. And I actually thought he threw the ball as well in that outing as we've seen him. He's been really sharp lately. You know, he, he's had to learn how to pitch, really. I mean, when he first came up and, and was were closing all those years in Anaheim, I mean, it was 98 mile an hour fastballs, you know, a nasty curveball, but he could just power it by you. That's not the type of pitcher he is anymore. He can still, you know, he can still sneak the fastball by and run it up there in the in the low, you know, low to mid 90s, but he's become much more of a polished pitcher with the curveball, the changeup, 
moving the ball around. And uh, lately, and, and you're right, Dwayne, in Seattle especially, he really looked like he is sharp. Pitch a little high. Tried the breaking ball, and the count is two and two. It's always tough coming back off of a of an injury and trying to get back into that rhythm and build up game strength. And it seems like he's done that. It's inside. Three balls, two strikes. He missed with a fastball there. Troy being careful with Cust here. You know that that Jack has one thing on his mind right now. Let's try to hit hit the long ball. And the count is full. In fact, I think that's on his mind every at bat. <laughs> he's either taking a pitch or he's trying to hit a pitch out. <laughs> no middle ground. 3 2. And there's ball four down. So a leadoff walk in the bottom of the ninth. Bobby Crosby will be the hitter. Jay Davis will run now for Cust. So they have speed at first with nobody out. And Bobby Crosby, who had a two run home run in the second inning last night, that turned out to be the deciding blow of the game. Oakland winning it two to one. And there goes Davis. The pitch is a strike. And the throw. They're going to get him. He's out at second base. Hawkador Evilmore puts the tag on him. Navarro guns down the pinch runner Davis. That takes care of that leadoff walk. And Troy Percival helped out his catcher there by a little bit of a slide step and not the high leg kick. That was a little abbreviated slide step right there. Allowing. Navi to get the ball out quick. Navi with a quick release had a little bit more time to work with because Percival didn't get up so high, and they're able to throw out Davis at second base. Boy, is that huge! One and, and one, the count now to Crosby. And a smart, you know, smart pitch by Percival there. He knows why Davis is in the game. They brought him in there to steal a bag, to have a threat on the base paths, and so instead of going with the high leg kick, he cuts it right down, gives Navi a chance. Navi does not disappoint. There's a strike on the outside part of the plate. A fastball from Percival and the count is one and two. Percival did all that and Navarro threw out the runner. Evilmora put the tag on him. Two balls, two strikes. A high popper left side for Ben Zobrist. He's got it, two gone. Two outs in the ninth with the bases empty. The save Percival picked up the other night in Seattle was his career save number 350. He's eighth on the all time saves list. Now, Emil Brown. Will be the pinch hitter. Ground hitting for Hanahan. The pitch is wide. All the way to the backstop. A ball, no strikes.
Brown one out of two lifetime against Percival you see that hit a home run. Pitch is up. Two balls no strikes. The 2 0 delivery. And that's high. Percival behind in the count, three and nothing. And the pitch is a strike. And wide. Second walk of the inning. The Browns at first. The catcher, Kurt Suzuki, will bat. Oakland with a base runner and two gone. Percy was trying to make some perfect pitches there on Emil Brown, who's got tremendous amount of power and obviously he's in there for that reason and uh, it's funny because sometimes Percy will tell you you know if I go two and zero on a guy I'll look to the on deck circle to see who's there maybe I'll take my chances with him and you wouldn't think so with you know bringing the uh, the winning run up to the plate but I wouldn't put it past him. Well here's the catcher Suzuki. Pitch is high. One and oh. Suzuki with a single and a walk tonight. Percival trying to close it out. The Rays lead three to two. And the foul, that's out of play. One and one. The Angels having a heck of a game with the Mariners. Seattle scored three in the top of the ninth, and the Angels are running the bottom of the ninth to tie it at seven. That game's now in the bottom of the tenth. One and one the count to Kurt Suzuki. Check swing and a foul ball headed out of play. Now it's one and two. First two away. And a popper right side for Iwamura. Hockey waiting for it. He's got it. And the Rays are winners. No runs with a man left in the bottom of the ninth. And the Rays win this one three to two. They pull even in this current series at a game apiece. They go 4 2 on this road trip so far, and they again lead the American League East by three full games over the Boston Red Sox as they have beaten the Oakland A's tonight 3 to 2. Two hours and 56 minutes, the time of this game. Rays are winners. Brian Anderson, Dwayne Stats, great to have you with us. Hope you've enjoyed the telecast. We'll see you later on the postgame show when Todd Callis comes along following this.